This is Sunday, so this is an original for you lovers of this series. This is not a midweek drop. This is not something you've already seen before. This is brand new for you. Today, we are dealing with 1978 Business as Usual, our second Richard Maller on film. <laughs> you know, Richard lived that Burt Reynolds Boogie Nights life. Half of his career is on film, the other half is on video. This predates all that video work. Now, like Holiday for Angels, we have a clever plot device. A, you know, a pitch meeting about a con book and all the stories within the book are what Richard shows us. We have a dude, York Madison, what a cool name, is looking for a publisher for his book. His book, techniques on how to dupe women into dating. He's a crummy guy, bad moral compass. So right off the get, he is throwing a curveball. He's got a pitch to a strong black woman and she ain't taking no stink from nobody. And by the end, you know what she does? She takes that JB Smooth advice from Curb Your Enthusiasm. She flips that on him. She flips it. Take that, you flip it. I love this. Now, here's a weird coincidence here at Barefoot. In our midweek drops, it's almost done. We are doing Debbie Does Dallas right now, 1978. Now this is Richard Maller's Business as Usual, 1978. Two of the cheerleaders are in this movie. So that's pretty cool. These are some hardworking women in 1978. All right, of course this was X-rated. We got it down to G money on the dot. Squeaky clean adult films. This was 65 minutes long. We got it down to 12. All right, let's add to the Richard Maller collection. Get on in there, get on in. You don't even have to go anywhere. Just sit there, transition. Madison here to see you, ma'am. Ah, yes, Mr. Madison. Send him in. Well, I was expecting a man to discuss my book. Ah, that's okay. You've read my book, of course, haven't you? I may have glanced through it, but suppose you refresh my memory on some of the highlights. <laughs> I like that. You see, you're almost correct. You see, what it is, it's, it's, it's more just a guide. You see, it's a, it's a journal of techniques used by me and uh, men that I've interviewed. See, uh, techniques that work. Yeah, they work, and they're legal, too, yeah. You're referring to techniques. Aha! <laughs> now you've got it. Hey, remember a few years ago, there was this fellow who tried to uh, pass himself off as uh, Richard Avedon, the photographer, you know, in Europe. Why don't you tell me of some of the other chapters in your book? Okay, great. Wow, you're really interested, aren't you? Listen, see, what I do is, with each case history, I break it down at the beginning of each chapter. Yes, this is Dr. Pranks. 
I am looking for someone to work as a receptionist for my new office, provided that the person is physically sound, of course. Yes, thank you. Oh, hi. Hi. How are you? Hi. Have a seat, please. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Have a seat, pull this out, please, and I'll be right with you. You see, actually, I'm just moving into my new office. The, um, the movers haven't moved in my medical equipment yet. You see, it's very fortunate that I still keep my practice intact. You see, actually, I liked it on the west side. But since most of my patients are movie stars located in this area, I decided to make the change. Don't you agree? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Well, there's your age. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see your name is Lisa. May I call you Lisa? Of course. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You see, Lisa, I think the role of reception is very important to a doctor. So therefore, I'm prepared to start the salary at uh, $800 a week. Would Eight, that be adequate? 800 Well, yes. Well, of course, it's open negotiation. You see, Lisa, quite frankly, I like you. I think you're the right person for this position. Why, <laughs> Bob Redford was telling me just the other day that I should find a better receptionist. Someone young, personable, brighten things up, he said. Actually, I like the receptionist that I had, but I think that Bob was kind of jealous because she ran away to Monte Carlo with one of my other patients. Perhaps you've heard of him, Jack Nicholson? <laughs> well, you see, when Bob comes in next week, we'll have to treat him very gently. I'll be real professional, you'll see. Good. Now, naturally, when the girl showed up for work the following week, you see, the legitimate occupant of the office didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> you see, Dr. Pranks had ceased to exist. <laughs> was that one of your techniques? Oh, God, no. I wish I could take credit for it, but no, no, that goes to a very inventive fellow from Sarasota, Florida. You see, I do change the names, of course, to uh, protect my sources. Of course. How did you research this book, by the way? Uh, how did you come in contact with these con men? Oh, oh, that was easy. You see, as soon as they heard of my intention to write the book, they contacted me. You see, most of these fellows are uh, justifiably proud of their accomplishments. And the others were uh, uh, just, uh, you know, personal friends of mine. Oh, birds of a feather. Could you tell me of an incident involving one of your <clears throat> so-called friends? Sure. Hey, uh, you're really interested in this, aren't you? Listen, how about uh, chapter... Chapter... Um, where is it? Chapter 9. You see, I've got a friend who um, runs a sweatshop, cranking out uh, cheap clothes by even cheaper labor. Step on any pins. Look at this place. Look at it. This is a factory. This is where generations of New York City women have toiled and slaved. This is where the working class lives. What better place to fill in the denim layout than right here in the place where it's made? Oh, I 
God, you're a genius. If I had brains like yours, there's no place I couldn't go. I'm going to shoot the way out of here that you wouldn't believe. I got these beautiful little creatures here looking. And this is Teresa. And this is, uh, what, 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 Deborah what, honey. This is Deborah mm -hmm. Honey. Wow. <laughs> Look at them. I'm going to dress them up in your clothes, in your creations, and my eyes. My camera eye, my cinematic sense of verite. You girls should be grateful to me right. for showing you right. this, for showing you this, all of this. This is how right. the other half lives. Don't worry about a what thing. Are you, what are you doing? This is the saga of the American working girl. I don't believe this. You can believe it. Don't worry. Remember the mediums. Now listen, girls. Remember what I told you about this place? About how they work in here, about how they work their fingers to the bones. This is what's important in the layout I'm doing. Don't forget the mediums. Look, look at these girls. Look at the magnificent. They will fill this place. Don't worry about a thing. Girls, what do you think of the place, huh? Fantastic. Wonderful. Wonderful. I think it's fantastic. Cute. We're going to be caught do you know that you're going to be the envy of every working girl in New York? And there's one thing that I want you beauties never to forget, and that's this. I want you to listen to that this beautiful finished product came from those raw materials, and it's all due to good old American ingenuity. Yes, it is. It never happened. Good old American ingenuity. There's nothing like it. A lot of hard work. You know, you're really one clever guy. Rock singer groupies. Actually, the ingredients were a little, a little more complicated. Is this where the party is? What party would that be, young lady? Well, I was at a disco party, and I heard some people whisper that the Rolling Stones are having a party here. Don't say that so loud. Do you want to start a panic? Who told you that? Well, never mind. Well, I'm not at liberty to say who might be in there. All I can tell you is that this party is private. No one admitted without invitation. <laughs> yes. Oh, Mick. I mean, uh, Mr. Jagger. Mick Jagger? Yes. Yes, anything you. you want, I sir. I listen to your yes. records. I love you. Oh, you're so mean. I wanted to talk to him. He's my favorite. I know that he'd let me in if I could see him or talk to him. Ma'am, if you just settle down. He's seeing you right now. Look. watching me right now? That's what that phone call was about. He scans all his guests personally, and you caught his eye. He's interested. Amazing. But wasn't there a case of where someone's plan just went haywire? Or someone's idea just didn't work? Oh, sure, sure. What went wrong? Well, you see, he, uh, he tried to get her attention by throwing a, uh, a small pebble at her window. Unfortunately, he used a, uh, a very heavy pebble. <laughs> now, that's one there that didn't work out. This never, never worked out, though, one there. <laughs> oh, you've got some light, Mr. Madison. Another day, another banger. Remember that YouTuber? What did you think? Who's that guy? Who's the guy that always says, what did you think? What did you think? Did you like it? This whole picture is filled with needle drops. We've had to cut out the needle drops. Almost all are during the scenes that we would not put in this program anyway. But just letting you know that they're there. Richard ain't caring about licensing back in the late 70s. There's not only a Rolling Stones song in this, which you won't be hearing, but there's a whole scene, which you will be seeing, about Mick Jagger's personal security. Yeah, I was gonna say bodyguard, not a bodyguard. Security team for Mick Jagger, that's a scene in this movie. Groupies trying to go see Mick. 
You know, Richard lived that uh, Burt Reynolds Boogie Nights life. You know, Richard lived that Burt Reynolds Richard Mailer. What? Now, in this movie, we probably see the best 1978 video camera that I've ever seen in my life. You may have seen this before because I've put it on my Instagram story numerous times. You know, I'll just use the, the background and then type some of my gobbledygook over it. Some great New York stolen shots, just shooting without a care in the world. I love that two onlookers make the cut. Quick glance, quick glance. Our quick glances are a battle of the sexes too. I wonder if that's on a deeper Richard Mailer level. We got a female looking back. We have a male looking back. This whole thing is just battle of the sexes. And I hope you know what side I'm on. I'm working on like three or four Richard Mailers right now. I didn't even tell Paige this is coming out, so she'll just see it like everyone else. Hi Paige. Although we've already talked about this, so she knows. All right, thanks for watching. It's a whole new year. I appreciate you guys. No more Randall, that stupid 365 days of found footage. I look forward to building up our production company as well as our YouTube. Happy New Year from Jason from Barefoot, from all of Barefoot, from all of humanity to all of humanity. Happy New Year. We got a bunch of mid-week mid drops uh, lined up and so I'll see you soon. Hey, we have a PayPal button. Will someone try to go? Um, it's easy to find on desktop. It's on our banner. I don't know where it is on mobile. In links, wherever links are. Will someone uh, send me a dollar just so I can see if I did it correctly? Don't you have friends? Ha ha ha. No, I don't have friends.